Hi guys, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev. Today we're going to be talking about Playmaker and projectiles. Now I came across a problem with my own game that I've been working on where I wanted to throw a grenade from spot A to spot B and I wanted it to always land on spot B. And I didn't want it to just sort of move um, horizontally, it needed to go in an arc like an actual grenade. And I needed to do it with a rigid body so that when it hit the right location that it would you know, bounce around realistically or bounce off a wall if it couldn't make it to that location. So this was a bit tricky for me, I'm not a real math person, but I went to the Unity forums, went through a whole bunch of different answers, sort of synthesized from that uh, way of doing this. And I took that information and wrote it into two different Playmaker actions that I'm going to show you here about how to throw a grenade from um, one spot to another, or it could be a cannonball or another kind of projectile using force and a rigid body on it. As well, after a little bonus for this, let me load this up here because this might take a second depending on my internet, I used a, another package. Uh, my actions are free, They're, they don't need any packages at all, so I'll go over that. But I did use a second package that draws the uh, projectile line, so the line can be shown when it's flying to show where it's going to land, or we can use a predictive path to show where it will land if you follow through with the current settings. And so this asset is called the trajector, trajectory predictor, and it's about ten dollars. And I wrote a simple action to help you predict the uh, trajectory as well. So we'll go over this at the second half of this video. So I've got a new scene in Unity. There's nothing really happening. I, I do have Playmaker already um, installed. I've got a bunch of other assets installed, but I'm not using them, so don't worry about that. Just make sure you have Playmaker installed. The next thing you want to do is go to my GitHub account and download my general Playmaker actions. And in there, you're going to find two actions. And I've got them under Custom is where you'll find them once you've imported them in. And the actions you're looking for is calculate projectile throw speed. This could be just calculate projectile speed, I guess, but I have it called throw speed because that's what it was originally called. As well, we have the projectile force apply. So this applies force um, specifically using um, force mode velocity change. And if you don't know what that is, it doesn't matter. You can use this action. The custom action I wrote uh, for the asset is called projectile path prediction 3D. So this is for 3D only. Now, so just go to the GitHub account, download my general Playmaker actions. I'll put a link in the description to this video. Uh, you know, you just download the entire zip, unzip that folder, and put it into your Playmaker, or sorry, into your Unity assets folder here. And it will automatically compile them into your Playmaker. That's all you need to do. So I have my action browser here on the right hand side as you see, and I've got my Playmaker um, window down at the bottom. Okay, so in a new scene I'm just going to add a uh, 3D cube. I like to use cubes for floors. So we'll just give this uh, like a 20 by a 0.1 by a 20. And this will be our floor, so I'll just call it that. And then we're going to need, um, let's just use two cubes, or two spheres, so we'll call this um, on the target, and I think it's a little too big, so let's make this smaller, like a 0.2. And this will be our target, this is what we're trying to hit. Let's put this low, and I'm going to give this a rigid body. And uh, let's just give it a color. So I'm going to just choose all my materials and pick a nice random color that's easy to see. Um, this red barrel one. Okay, that's good. Now we can see it in the scene. So let's just put this lower here. Okay, I'm going to duplicate my target and this is going to be my source here. We'll call this source. And what we're going to do is basically lob this source over to this target. Um, the target for us just holds a vector 3, so 
you know, you could input a vector three from your mouse position or whatever else you want. I'm just going to use this object to grab it as an easy way to do it. Now, the first thing you want to do on your source um, is let's just start an FSM. And I'm going to call this get vector threes. And it, as you know, for Playmaker, you can call these whatever you want. This is just to help you remember what they do and add a transition to finished. So when it's finished, it will go to the next state, right? I'm gonna go back to our actions and I want to get position. Okay, so if I type get position, if I get spell, mine's under recent here, but it's also under the transform. And I wanna get the position of, I'm just gonna label this for myself, source. And I want the position of the target. So don't forget you can rename these um, labels of the actions here, but I just add a dash and then whatever it is, otherwise I forget what it is. I, I might forget, oh, this is a get position action. I might not even know what that is. So later on when I come back. Okay, so the target is the specify game object. We'll grab the target and drag it in there. And we're gonna save it as a vector three. We'll call a new variable, we'll call it target position. Okay. Then the source is the object uh, that has this FSM on it, so we can just use the owner. And we're going to also make a new variable. We'll call this um, we'll call this source position. So that makes sense. So okay, once we have that, we just want to go to the next state. And what do we want to do in the next state? Let's see here. You didn't have this really well planned out, but we'll figure it out. So custom, we want to calculate the projectile throw speed. So this is the custom action that I wrote. And it has a little note here that says, the return results throw speed, that's here, uh, is a vector three force, which can be used with the custom action projectile apply force, so that's here. Uh, to move your projectile. So it's just a little hint to what this is in case you forget. Um, so there, there is a description here, maybe my uh, head's covering it, but it says calculate the necessary throw projectile speed to reach a specific target by vector three. So we have two variables we can use here. The first is the origin or the source. The second is the target position. Now. The one we're not going to calculate a lot today is called a time to target, and I'm just going to put in one for now, so which means one second for this to reach this. Um, the more time you add, the higher the arc is, right? Because it's going to take more time to reach the target, and you'll see that as we do it. It'll make more sense. So the throw speed we want to save. So I'm just going to call this throw speed, and I'm going to add a finish because when this is done, And let's just call this second step calculate throw speed. And this next state, I'm just going to call it wait because I, I want to wait a second so I can see this easier. Otherwise, it just pops off as soon as I start my, my game here, and then I always miss it. So let's just add two seconds. And then when that's done, it will finish. And then finally, we're going to lob this object. And so we're going to go back to custom. Do, 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 C for custom. And um, we're going to use this projectile force apply. We're using this one specifically because it has apply force of a rigid body game object using force mode velocity change. So I believe there is a. Um, add force here and it actually does have a force mode so you could potentially use this uh, add force that comes with playmaker I wrote my own my own just to uh, deconfuse myself and then I only have to do one thing so the force amount I'm just gonna do throw speed and you don't want to do it every frame you just want to do it once so we we'll just call this throw projectile Okay, so that's it. Um, 
Let's save this and hit play and see what happens. I don't know where I put my camera yet, so we might have to switch back to the scene view. Gonna take a second to compile here, apparently. Okay, there you go, you saw one projectile launch and it hit the other one, they both have a rigid body applied, so they're sort of slowly rolling away and off the edge. So, let's try this again. Okay, if we wanted this to have a higher arc, we would need it to take more time to reach the target. So instead of one second, we'll change this to two seconds. And now this ball will take two seconds to reach the other ball. As you can see, the arc has gotten higher. And, you know, we could get even more crazy. And we could say, um, where is it here? This one. Like, what if we said take five seconds? As you can see, the ball went ridiculously high. And it landed there. Now, you're going to find that sometimes the ball will pass through another object. And this is due to uh, the collision detection. And thanks to my friend on our Playmaker Slack channel helped me figure this out, is you may need to change the rigid body from discrete to continuous if this ball keeps passing through other objects because it's moving too fast. So don't forget to change the collision detection if that's happening. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go over it, but if you wanted to keep a uh, consistent arc, you would need to basically measure the distance between these two and use the uh, distance between the two objects in order to determine the time to target. And if you kept that consistent, then your time target would always change and therefore the arc would always remain the same. So for me that's not really an issue so I'm not going to go over that but that's how you would do it. Now the other issue here is sometimes we want to know where this is going to land, not only land but how it's going to get there, what's the arc going to be. Um, you know, maybe it's a top-down game similar to mine where you want to throw you know, the grenade and people should be able to see where it's going to throw before they throw it so they can make the decision because maybe it's going to hit a wall or something else. So that's when this asset called the trajectory predictor comes into play. And it does lots of cool things and it's fairly simple. So if you do want to know, uh, get this and import it and uh, put it into your project, I'm going to cover how to use that now pretty straightforward. So it's in my project and it's uh, called the trajectory, trajectory Projector and it's got lots of settings so you can go check that out but basically I'm just going to add a component to this ball and we're going to call it the Trajectory Predictor. That's it. And straight out of the box if we debug on update and start and we want this line to render on not only the editor but also the display. That's it, so let's just click play. See what happens. And as you can see, the line is making the prediction. So it's quite high, so let's um, do a more realistic projection here. There you go. Now we may also want this to predict as in to tell us beforehand, before we throw it, because once it's in the air then it's it's already in the air so things are too late. So I wrote a custom action to make this happen and you want to make sure you turn on this D, draw debug on prediction. So we'll check that off. And we've calculated everything. So we're going to go to this wait state, go to the actions. 
let's see how we can do this. And under custom, we're gonna get the do 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 projectile path prediction 3D. We're gonna put this before the weight. So um, I gotta remove the game object here. It actually shouldn't be here. So there should be no game object. Um, we're just going to use the start position, basically. And the start position could be your game object, but I don't, I don't want it to be here by default. So our start position is our source. Our velocity is our um, throw speed. Now, the gravity by default in Unity is a negative 9.81. So if you haven't changed the gravity in your game, then you can just leave it here. It's set by default to be the correct gravity. If your gravity has changed, you're gonna find it on your project settings and uh, physics, I think. So in physics here at the very top, you have gravity. It's X, zero, Y, which is down, or I guess up, up and down, is a negative 9.81. Z is zero, so that works for me. So that's by default. My linear drag is going to be zero because I don't have any linear drag on this object. So you could have some drag on your rigid body, that's up to you. And, um, you know, honestly, I can't remember if I need an every frame or not. So let's try this and see what happens. So perhaps I need an every frame to make this work the way I want. Let's try this, every frame. There we go. So now it's predicting the path, and then until it's done waiting, and it launches it off. So again, there's different ways we could use this. We could use the um, the mouse. Uh, let's see, is it mouse pick event? I forget now. I think it's the mouse pick event. Look at this while we're mouse down. Yeah, I guess it's a mouse pick event. So we just use the mouse pick event and uh, we set mouse pick to every frame and then you can store the position of where the mouse is. Then you can use that mouse position as your um, target position and you know you can have all of this on one FSM, including the projectile prediction path. And then basically wherever you move your mouse, it would show the prediction to that location. You don't have to shoot from a ball to a ball. So that would be one way to do it. And then when you click, you have a mouse click event, the mouse click would go to the next state and the state would actually apply the uh, projectile. So, I hope you like this. This is a, hopefully a fairly easy way without any assets that you need uh, just to get it going from point A to point B. This does work along any um, axis. So it could be hit something high, hit something low. It could be up here or down there. It, it doesn't um, only work on one flat axis, which is sort of a problem with some of the other calculations. The downside is, of course, you do need to calculate the amount of time in order to decide what kind of arc you want, but that's not particularly difficult to overcome. So this is, again, Eric from Dumb Game Dev. You can join us on our Playmaker Slack chat channel. Um, the link is in the YouTube here. It's just a bunch of us talking about Playmaker and, and uh, VR stuff and whatnot. Uh, partially social, partially game development. Uh, I have a Patreon account. If you liked this tutorial, you want to see more actions, you want to see specific actions, go ahead, hit up my Patreon account, you know, pledge a few dollars a month, and that will help more and more stuff get out there. Okay. Have